The Byzantine Empire, a continuation of the Roman Empire in the East, was a realm steeped in religious fervor. Yet, within this deeply religious society, a storm was brewing, the iconoclasm. Spanning over a century, this period witnessed a fierce debate over the use of religious images known as icons in Christian worship. Imagine a world where the very images that inspired devotion became the subject of intense dispute and destruction. At the heart of the matter lay a fundamental question. Did the veneration of icons constitute idolatry, or were icons a legitimate means of honoring the sacred figures they depicted? It was a struggle for the soul of the empire, a power struggle between the emperors and the church. To understand the Byzantine iconoclasm, we must delve into the historical context, explore the arguments of both sides, and examine the key events and figures that shaped this tumultuous period. At the heart of the iconoclastic controversy lay a fundamental disagreement over the nature of religious images and their role in Christian worship. On one side stood the iconodules, who believed that icons were sacred objects worthy of veneration and respect. For them, icons were not idols but windows into the divine, aids to prayer and contemplation. They argued that icons were stylized representations of spiritual truths, not realistic depictions. To venerate an icon was to show respect to the sacred person or event it represented. On the other side stood the iconoclasts, who viewed icons with suspicion, seeing them as dangerous representations that blurred the line between veneration and idolatry. They argued that the second commandment explicitly forbade the creation of any likeness for the purpose of worship. The iconoclasts believed that true faith should be based on scripture and the teachings of the church, not on visual representations. They feared that the common people would be led astray by the veneration of icons, mistaking the image for the reality it represented. The iconoclasts and iconodules represented two distinct theological and cultural currents within Byzantine society. The iconoclasts drew support from certain segments of the clergy and some emperors who saw in iconoclasm a way to centralize their authority. Geographically, iconoclasm found its strongest support in the eastern provinces of the empire. The iconodules drew their strength from the monastic communities where icons played a central role in prayer and meditation. Many theologians and bishops also defended the use of images, arguing that they served a valuable didactic purpose. The iconoclastic controversy was not merely a theological debate, it had profound political and social implications. The emperors who embraced iconoclasm saw it as a way to assert their authority over the church and to unify the empire. The iconodules saw the veneration of icons as an integral part of their faith and a matter of religious freedom. The controversy divided families and communities contributing to a climate of suspicion and mistrust within Byzantine society. The iconoclastic controversy was a period of intense struggle and upheaval in Byzantine history. The first iconoclastic period was inaugurated by Emperor Leo III the Isaurian in 726. Concerned about the excessive veneration of icons, Leo issued an edict forbidding the use of images in religious settings. This decree sparked immediate opposition, particularly from the monks and the populace of Constantinople. One of the most prominent defenders of icons during this period was St. John Damascene, a learned monk and theologian. Although living outside the Byzantine Empire, John wrote influential treatises defending the use of images in worship. Despite facing opposition, Leo III and his son, Constantine V, continued to promote iconoclasm during their reigns. Constantine V convened the Council of Hyrea in 754, which condemned the use of images and declared iconoclasm the official doctrine of the Byzantine Church.